Good morning everybody, Belinda here from Visualize DNZ and it's Trashcraft Tuesday and I've got a project today that I've been wanting to do for a long time but I kept bearing the item I want to work with in other rooms and so finally got it out and it is a pair of jeans. So before I grab the jeans out though, I'll go through um, what you might need to to have a play with this so obviously a pair of jeans now if you don't have jeans any other fabric that you want to use would be perfectly fine but I just particularly want to find ways to use um, old jeans old denim that type of thing but it could be upholstery fabric it could be uh, an old other piece of clothing uh, sweat shirting or whatever so if you don't have denim or jeans that you can work with just use whatever you do have uh, but you might want pinking shears uh, again these have only just resurfaced after I couldn't find them for a while if you don't have pinking shears then just a pair of scissors uh, will be fine just be aware that there'll be a bit more fraying uh, and, but we don't mind fraying do we so that's good you might want some buttons uh, some embroidery thread if you have it or regular sewing cotton and whatever color you like um, needles obviously if you're working with thread you need needles um, a pen I find a pen quite useful and some good glue um, so I'm using my alcohol based premium craft glue uh, you could use um, Fabri-Tac or something along those lines just something that's going to hold really well on the fabric and whatever you want to glue to it uh, so there's some other bits and pieces that you might or might not want, entirely optional, and we'll get to those uh, when I show them. So that's where I'm at now. Uh, so I'm going to grab out my pair of jeans here, which is a pair of jeans that were given to me um, by a lady, and she is absolutely tiny, like there's nothing to her. So these are tiny, tiny jeans. You do need a pair of regular scissors just to get into the beginning of the cutting because it's quite tough. And the first thing I'm going to do is cut out this back pocket here. So Hubby's just come home from doing a bit of shopping. If you can hear the noises in the background. It's just him walking through the house. Right, so I'm just going to trim around this back pocket just leaving a very small border and I'll show you once I've got it cut out I'll show you what I intend on doing with the pocket or pockets because I've I had to do a little bit of play before I did the video just to make sure that what I thought I could do I could actually do so I have already cut out the other pocket and a few other bits and pieces and had a play so this morning I'm not completely flying blind uh, as I normally do in these types of videos. Oops, it's very awkward to do this and try and keep it in camera. That's why I'm struggling a little bit. Normally I just throw it around on my lap and be all good. Now I do like this pocket on this side because it's got this little metal um, stud thing here which is just a really cool, it's got this squiggly, I don't know if you can see it, squiggly sort of pattern on it. Um, and it's got this really cool embroidery, which is super fun. So let me just pop this to the side for a moment. So we've got our pocket here. And what are pockets good for? Well, pockets are good for pockets to use as a pocket in a journal. Um, so it does depend on the style of your pocket, the size of it. These, so this is the other one I cut out this morning. These pockets are actually too wide. Even if I trimmed it right down to the edge, it's too wide for a page in my journal. So it would be fine for a bigger journal. Uh, but it does fit on the inside covers. As you can see there. So this is my Cowgirls and Lace journal that I'm working on. So it works really nicely inside the cover 
so I am going to put one of these and I think this one with wee stud because I think that just makes it a little bit more exciting and interesting little tiny little detail so I think I'm going to place that one on the inside cover and I am going to glue it down because I've already sewed the cover together so I will use a good amount of glue and I could use it as a double pocket so have it tuck in behind um, but I think I just want a single pocket because it's already quite bulky and I don't mind it getting bulky but you know there's a point where it's too bulky so I think I am going to glue that in there which I won't do right now um, but yeah I think that'll be super fun and really nice tie in with the theme of cowgirls and lace so that's how to use a pocket just sweet simple easy now if you have a pocket that's not embroidered or decorated in any way then absolutely decorate it up you could add some lace or some stitching deal with it however you would like but this one's already embroidered and studded so i'm not gonna not gonna mess with what already looks good okay so let's grab back our jeans again and she was just throwing these out so it is totally fit within the trash craft realm and certainly do now that i've hacked them to pieces right now i'm going to just cut a section out i'm not being too uh, careful about the section i'm cutting out i'm just want to detach a piece that i can work with You still get some um, bits falling off even with the pinking shears. Um, I'm covered in little fragments right now. And that's fine. You know, when you work with fabric, you just kind of know that you're going to get threads and bits and pieces on you. Right. So there we go. I've just got a section to work with. It's a bit wrinkly because it's been stored, um, you know, folded and that. And so it's got creases. I'm just going to work with that. Um, I'm not going to iron it. I don't like ironing. I very rarely iron. And if I do iron, it's for something craft related. But this, it's not going to matter. So, let's look at what I've already done this morning. So, the first thing I did was this star here. So, I just cut out a wonky star. I drew it on the back first. And then I embroidered it with some embroidery thread. Just to make something a bit different so there's that idea there's just this little wonky shaped bit um, which I sewed a ribbon rose onto there's this circle that I just freehand cut with the pinking shears and then make a little slit in the middle and put a brad through it and I think that's kind of cute and fun uh, and then there's this little strip here that I glued on some cabochons. And this is one of the things I thought you might need, along with like brads, um, flowers, all that sort of thing. Anything that you want to embellish with. So these wee mini cabochons, they're kind of a pearlescent, um, trans, semi-translucent kind of thing. Um, so I just glued on five of them with my premium craft glue. And that makes a cute little embellishment. You can stick it on a pocket or you could fold it and make it a page tab. And what I'm actually going to do with this one is I'm going to use it as a topper on a tag for my Cowgirls and Lace journal. So if I grab my journal back, um, I've got... Oh, that pocket doesn't actually go in there. So I've got this fabric pocket here. And I've got a, this journal card in the front and I need to put one in the back. I need to put a tag. So I plan on when I make the tag, that will be the little tab at the top of the tag. And I thought that would be really cute. So I'm going to pop that in there so I remember. Uh, and I'll just get these out of the way. I've also got this piece, which I thought I might sew on this green flower I haven't done it yet but I'm thinking I'm still thinking about how I might want to do it I might put a sequin or a button in the middle 
Let's have a wee look at what a button would look like. Don't know if this one suits, but this is just a green button. You know, something like that could be kind of cute. Um, I might stitch up here so it gives it a bit more details. I'm not sure. Or I might even glue it. I might decide to glue it and just be lazy, you know. Avoid the stitching and just go straight for the glue. Uh, then I've got this little bit here. And I thought I've got this little flower layer here. And another little ribbon rose. And maybe I'll layer those up together and sew those onto there. And super easy to sew together. In fact, I'll do that on camera now so you can see. Uh, so where is my needles? Here's my needles. Already got a bit of cotton on here. You can probably hear the creaking floorboards. It's impossible to move quietly in our house. The floorboards announce every single movement and then some. So yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you can hear all that creaking as my husband tries to very quietly walk around but it's just impossible in our house it's an old house it was built in 1920 so it's over a hundred years old and it has its quirks like squeaky floorboards so yeah heaven help a burglar trying to get round and sneak in without us knowing because we would hear them Right, so I've just tied a knot in the end of just regular sewing thread. And I think I'll hold this in place and just go straight up through both layers. Like so. And then with these flowers, because they've got this little, almost like I'd call it a dome in the back. I'm just going to go through that dome on the back. Oh. It's a little bit hard to get through because it's all glued together so it's, you're going through glue as well pull it down and then back through and then once I've got that initial one in you can feel on the back you can feel where that dome is from the flower so I just go all around from one side of the dome to the other or the back of the flower backwards and forwards crossing oops without dropping the needle preferably backwards and forwards just catching that dome of the flower in behind that's all that's needed making sure I don't go back through the same hole so I don't undo what I've just done and I just do that a number of times until I'm sure that it's well secured sewing it on so it's very rough it's very uh, dare I say amateurish but it works like as long as it's secure who cares what it looks like on the back because the back's going to be glued or sewn down to something else so it does not matter what it looks like on the back you don't need to be a good sewer you just need to make sure that it's well attached so I'll do one more like so and I think that's yep that's all well attached and then knotted off at the back so I'll do one in and then through the loop Oops, I just pulled the needle off the cotton. There, all these fragments from the denim on my craft mat there. And there we go. There we have another cute little embellishment for something, whether it be a pocket or what have you. So that's that. All sorts of things you can do. Just be creative. Use what you've got. You don't need to go out and buy heaps of supplies. You can just grab whatever and it might be a fussy cut image, a die cut or something that you just glue onto it would work just as well. So there is one more little project I want to do uh, with the denim. 
uh, with you on camera specifically for the Cowgirls and Lace journal and when I find where it is here so I've got this envelope as part of the signature so it's I've already made it into a pocket here but I've got this text on here and I I mean the text is okay it's not bad but I do want to cover it so what I want to cover it with is a strip of denim so I just want to make sure I cut it to the right size or long enough oops get rid of that thread it's annoying me um, so let's go about there I'm just cutting a, a straight rectangle like so so I think yep that covers it really nicely and I don't know why I put them away the, this little bag of mini cabochons so like I put on the other piece I'm going to glue some onto this piece and then that'll be a cool little decoration so let's choose some out These are just, it's just a little bag of ones that were roaming around loose that I cleaned up into a little bag. So they're very random sizes and colours. Um, and of course they all tip out upside down, so that's not very helpful in seeing what they look like. So I don't think we'll get matching colours or anything, but you know, lots of different colours can be fun. And I'm thinking I want the larger ones rather than the tiny, tiny ones. Just because they're a little bit easier to handle. And you could use sequins, um, pearl cabochons. Um, yeah, any any little decorative thing. If you've got one of those bedazzler type things, you could totally bedazzle it. And that would look beautiful. Look really pretty. I don't have a bedazzler, so... Um, the old fashioned glue all over the fingers and handling tiny little things is how I rock. Right, so I think I'm just going to start grabbing these larger ones and start putting them on. So I go from the two ends to start with. So let's do that first. Oops, I've got a little glue plug there. Of that so we can get the glue out oops yep gluey fingers are us so one at that end and my my rectangle isn't even straight I can see but you know what doesn't matter it's gonna look cute and so one at the other end, about the same distance from the end, give or take. Like it, it's not about perfection, as you can see, because my strip is not even. It's all about cute and fun and pretty and whatever other things you want it to be. So then I put one in the middle. That's you know as near as I can judge is about the middle. Um, just looking at what other colours we've got here. We've got some blue ones. So let's put a couple of blue ones on. I'm ending up sort of matching the colours and going even at the moment. So I've got yellow here, a brown one in the middle, bronzy colour. And there's these blue ones. So then I'm going to go in between those first two in the centre. And I'll do the same on the other side. And this is how I keep them semi evenly spaced doesn't work flawlessly but it works pretty well and this way if you get to a certain point and think well I haven't got any more to lay down then it doesn't matter because you've they're already evenly spaced or you can keep adding and filling up the gaps right there's some green ones here so let's add, let's add some green ones I'm going to go in between the first one and that blue one and then yeah so I'll put a green one here and then two more in that gap and I'm calling it done 
and we can glue it onto our envelope. There we go, and we've got plenty of yellow, so let's go for two more yellow ones. Oh, my fingers are so covered in glue right now. One in that gap. There was another sort of milky one there as well, but never mind, we'll go with yellow. There we go. So we've got our little line of cabochons or faux gems, um, whatever you want to call them. They are technically cabochons, which means they've got a flat back. Well, I think it means that. It might not. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but that's what I take it to mean anyway. So I'm just going to push these out the way for now. I'm sure you don't want to watch me pick them all up and put them back into the tiny wee bag. Right. So we're going to glue it down right there. What do you think? Cute? I think it's cute. So let's go ahead and pop it down. And then I've got one more idea, which is kind of a half-baked idea. That's why I'm saving it till last, because it's not fully fledged yet. But you might be interested, so. Let me having trouble seeing how much glue I've actually put on here. So let's just put a bit more, just to be sure. I think that's okay. And there we go. Cute, sparkly, and totally suitable for the cowgirls and lace theme of this journal. But you, you're maybe not doing a horsey theme or a cowgirl theme or whatever. It would look just as beautiful on any theme journal and tailor it as you see fit. So that's that. Now, my last idea that I've got for using... Oops is not knocking over stuff um, but that's what I just did so in the process of cutting out bits like the start you end up with random tiny little scraps like this um, which you kind of think well what can I do with them if you like making clusters then absolutely making clusters would be a brilliant way to use them up but I had a thought of doing more of a snippet strip which I've never actually done a fabric snippet, snippet roll, I think they're called, before. It's just not something I've, I've done. Um, so let's cut another little couple of random bits here. Um, just so I can kind of show you what I'm thinking. Right, so something, you know, so you've got your, all your little offcuts from creating your wonderful embellishments. And what to do with these. So, my thinking, I'm just grabbing out some fabric. So I've got my fabric here that I use for backgrounds and things. And where is the here I'm just looking for where it's already been cut this bit and this is um, secondhand fabric as well that I picked up somewhere at a thrift store or something I can't quite remember and I'm just gonna cut a strip here and again just use ordinary scissors if that's all you've got and you'll just get a bit of extra pretty fraying. And there's nothing wrong with that. Oop. These are a little bit sticky, these uh, pinking shears. Don't know why, probably because they haven't been used for ages. Right, so I'm just going to try and cut a reasonably straight strip. And I want it wider than my 
pieces in general. eyeballing that it's going to be roughly straight. And if I was doing this, you know, if I was doing this off camera, I'd make it a longer piece, at least a page length, but you know, I'm just, I'm just floating the idea. And then placing them, and you could mix it up with bits of lace or other bits of fabric. But I like the idea of just denim, and I think I'm going to do a just denim one, because that, to me, sounds cool. Just sort of arrange them like so, and then run it through the sewing machine. And if you don't have a sewing machine, then you can absolutely, totally hand stitch it. And hand stitching is really beautiful in journals. It's, it takes more time, it's more effort, more involvement, um... And there's just that beautiful handmade quality to hand stitching. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It can have loops and knots and wonkiness. And that in itself is really beautiful. So don't, if you don't have a sewing machine, don't let that put you off. You can totally just run through some, you know, tacking stitches even. It doesn't need to be fancy. Just anything that will hold it down and add another layer of texture and detail. And I think, Obviously, I haven't got enough pieces to fill my strip here. I think that would make a super cute additional embellishment, edging on a page, um, on a pocket, on a tag, as a detail on a cover for a topper. Would look really pretty as well. And then, if you wanted to, you could further decorate it up with some of our wee cabochons, or bigger cabochons, or sequins, or charms. You could use charms, or buttons. Put a button here and there. Um, the fabric flowers, uh, ribbon flowers. Whatever you like. It's just an opportunity to really play and have fun. And then once this is done, you could also put little bits of lace on or a strip of lace so a strip of lace down the center like there's just so many ways you could turn this uh, into something really cool really unique and all based on trash they were trash they were going into the trash until I says I will take them so there we go I hope that's given you lots of ideas to play with Lots of things to think about and I hope you've got something, whether it be jeans or an old sweatshirt or whatever, to go ahead and have a play and make some really fun embellishments like what I've done here. Uh, one tip with this is when you make your slit, don't make it too big and you need to either use a craft knife, a sharp craft knife to make just a wee slit or you can carefully fold it and then snip with a pair of scissors. But don't make it too big, otherwise your bread's going to be too sloppy and you could show the cut. Uh, and then embroidery. So you could do something simple like that. You could do French knots. Um, if you're a fancy embroiderer, you could do leaves or, I don't know, you think of some ideas. I'm sure you've got plenty. So that's it for Trash Craft Tuesday today. Thank you so much for joining me. Hope you love this idea and I'd love to see if you make anything uh, along this line. So take care everybody and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!